remember, this is before the middle of the 19th century. Physicians were just beginning to grapple with physiology, the process of life. Death, the great mystery still, and perhaps forever, was then a total one. There existed almost no apparatus to prolong life, such as is common practice today. Death then was inevitable. It was occasionally predictable, but always total, except in the case of Professor Amadeus Valdemar. Easy, lady. Easy. All right, Luana. I have ladies' bridle. Let me help you dismount. I can manage. Watch the mare. She's as nervous as I am. Let's get back in among the trees by the river. Why did you risk passing me that note as he saw me out? I heard you make a promise. I hope you have no intention of keeping. You heard? The secret of the peephole in the portrait I discovered long ago. How? Because on the few occasions I've been able to resist his magnetic influence, pretending to be under it, I have watched Amadeus like a hawk, hoping against hope somehow to find a way to freedom. No, it will not be long until you do. Not with your help. What do you mean? Until I met you, Craig. What do you think has kept me alive during all these loathsome years? The knowledge that at least when he died, I would be a rich woman. But if he doesn't die, how can I inherit all his wealth? He will die. Not if you keep the promise you made. Luana, my darling, now listen to me. Even if I did keep it, the body is finite. No occult power could keep it alive or stop the disintegration of the cells once the heart has stopped and the blood ceased to flow. But suppose you are wrong, Craig. Suppose you put my husband just before death into a, a kind of suspended animation. Then what? If he is really on the point of death, I can always bring him out of it, can't I? I don't know. I don't trust Amadeus. He, he knows about us. What makes you think so? I will quote you his own words once he had put you under. I could cut your throat for the horns you have put on my head, and you would be none the wiser. You shall be made to pay in time. Oh, Craig. I'm still not convinced we cannot outwit him. We are not in control. I am, or I will be. Oh, do you really believe that? Oh, Craig, you are so naive. What do you mean, naive? I know exactly what I'm doing. And exactly what I plan to do. And no one can take over my mind unless I want them. Uh, oh, excuse me. Here, my love. A, a bouquet of roses because I love you. And to hell with the old fool who doesn't know what's going on. What? Your boot? No, no, no. Take it. This bouquet of ro... ro roses. That... Oh, that's, that's odd. It, it's one of my boots I, I, that I'm holding in my hand? The left one, just as he told you, to offer me as roses at six o'clock tonight while you were mesmerized. Now do you see why I fear him? He's always one step ahead of us, all the way. <laughs> The next ten days passed in a strange torpor, a dreamlike state that paralyzed all thought and made me function like an automaton, session after session with the professor, perfecting the techniques of mesmerism, both the establishment of the trance and then the careful methods of bringing the patient out of it. No mention of anything beyond the clinical, except the closing question each time. You still do solemnly promise before death takes me that you will put me under the influence? To my automatic reply, Yes, sir, Professor. I, I do solemnly promise. Until, finally, the fatal day arrived and the messenger came to fetch me to fulfill my given vow. <laughs> How is he? Sinking fast, barely holding on to life. I must hurry. Why? Let him die. It would be a blessing for all of us. I can't do that, Luana. You realize if you keep him legally alive that I am left with nothing? You have me. I don't have you. I can't have you. 
as long as I'm married to Amadeus. We can go on as before. No, we can't. Not even if I wanted to. People will be watching us now. But I love you. How can you and make of me what you plan to? A nurse to a living corpse, tied hand and foot to its service night and day. You keep him alive, and I might as well be dead forever as far as you are concerned. I climbed the stairs, outwardly calm, but inwardly a seething storm of emotion and indecision. At the open door to the bedroom, I stopped. That you, Nugent? Yes, Professor. Where in the name of conscience have you been? You still wish to be mesmerized? Wish? I command it by virtue of our compact. <coughs> and your sacred and solemn promise. Which I might choose to break? Oh, no, my dear doctor. I told you you will keep that promise. If you entertain any notion of not doing so, I have made certain provisions to make you weigh your decision carefully. What provisions? My affairs are in the hands of my solicitor. Not one penny goes to my wife by virtue of an early marriage settlement except an amount enough to maintain my body in suspended animation with her as its keeper. How can you demand such a monstrous thing? How could you, with your young body and easy morals, have done such a monstrous thing as steal her from me? I beg you to understand it was not her fault. I have no time to listen to your son. <coughs> Remember the boot and the flowers? Yes. You mean... How can you even speculate on what post-mesmeric suggestions I have implanted in your brain during our sessions? Ah, you see, I have thought of everything. And... Now, make haste. The shadows are gathering. Yeah. Hurry and do what you have been trained to do. Within five minutes, I could perceive unequivocal signs of the mesmeric influence. The glassy roll of the eye was exchanged for that unique expression of uneasy inward examination. With a few lateral rapid passes, I made the eyelids quiver, as if in incipient sleep, and then closed them altogether. I then stiffened the limbs of the sufferer, the legs at full length, the arms nearly so, the head slightly elevated. Is he dead? By all the vital signs, pulse, respiration... The contraction of the heart, I would say, yes. No. No, wait a minute. Look at him. At his mouth. He is moving. He, he isn't dead, but... No. Just sleeping and waiting. For what? For the cure. <gasps> when it comes, then wake me. So that I may live again. But there is no cure. Not in sight. So much the worse for you and your beloved. You had better pray with me that it comes. And soon. So, you chose your precious conscience over me. Hush. Trust me. How can I trust you? You tried to assure me a corpse could not be mesmerized. Not quite a corpse, but soon. Now believe me, Luana. The physical properties cannot sustain life no matter what the mental state. Now it is only a matter of waiting until he dies. And wait we did. Hour succeeding hour. 
day succeeding day and week and month until finally it had to be faced. Moribund the professor might be, dead he was not, nor would be till brought out of trance. Don't you see, Luana, this has always been my way out. If, if the worst came to the worst, physiologically there is not enough strength to maintain life. Now, at last, with, with a clear conscience, I can do what I never promised not to do. I, I can bring him out of the trance. Why have you waited this long? I, well, I, I could assign many reasons, but suddenly I, I realize I don't quite know. Only, only that we wait no longer. Professor Valdemar, can you hear me? Yes. Are you asleep? No, not asleep. What then? Dead or alive? Somewhere in between. What are you waiting for? A cure. There is no cure. And we cannot wait. I'm calling you back. Are you... Are you so sure? You were the teacher. You taught me how. I also never stinted on the warning. What warning? That there is no trick. It all depends on the subject. On his will. What he is willing to do. Without his will, you have no control. No control. Not ever to reach me again. Because I choose to stay where I am. So there we remain. Amadeus, Luana and me. Luana tied to him as his nurse. Myself forever trying unfruitfully to bring him back from that halfway house, either to life, to reason with him, or to death for his own peace and ours. In the Hall of Records, having heard this strange tale, I busied myself to look up the principles the records are fragmentary and incomplete. There is no mention of Amadeus, but I did discover two death certificates issued in a case of accidental drownings, or possibly a suicide pact, listed in police files. The names were Dr. Nugent and a woman identified only as a Mrs. Vladimir. Close enough to prove or disprove our story? Does it matter? I'll be back shortly. One loose end remains. The body of Professor Valdemar. That I could find no trace of. Only vague hints here and there of a cult that believed that death might be held at bay by placing bodies in suspended animation, much as the proponents of cryogenics or deep freezing propose today. Amadeus Valdemar could have been reawakened and long ago cured, and with the passage of time, gone to his ultimate reward. The only thing that tends to irk is that, I'm sorry to tell you, we'll never really quite know, will we? Our cast included Robert Dryden, Kurt Peterson, and Patricia Elliott. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Well, the words were, Don't worry, Nan, I'm all right. Don't worry. Love, Jim. 